Okay. So uh, I downloaded the Epic Game Store Unreal Engine 5.2 Examples uh, project. And if you search for sub substrate inside the folder, you'll find this map with a bunch of cool examples. Uh, this one here is, uh, shows the, how the legacy conversion works. I'm pretty sure when you tick substrate in the project settings, it automatically converts everything over, which is not reversible. So, you know, obviously don't use it on an existing project and uh, expect to go back. And there are bugs, and I have had some crashes already, so... Y yeah, be careful um, when you're using it. The coolest thing about this is the layering system. Uh, you can create some really interesting materials. Uh, I don't think they've even scratched the surface in these examples either. I think there's going to be some amazing stuff coming out with these things, uh, with this uh, substrate system. So that you can see material A, material B. Uh, the substrate slab is the one common denominator that's in pretty much all these materials. And the other stuff's pretty standard. I don't know what the substrate transmittance node does. But you can see here how they get layered on top of each other. So layer A. On the left hand there, you've got the material functions for substrate A and substrate B. You do have to have all of these plugged into the substrate vertical layer. And there's also a substrate horizontal, I think it's called horizontal layer. So those are all required. If I double click and go into one, you can see. Yeah, it's just the same material uh, Material um, we're looking at just now, and there's, there's material A, same thing. And yeah, they just get layered vertically. Um, this one over here is a mix, mix node, so it's like um, applying uh, an alpha map to a layer on, in substance, uh, you know, like a dirt map alpha. And you can adjust how much it's being applied. So, not very much. A lot. <laughs> this sort of node system is... Uh, yeah, the capabilities is, is uh, going to be pr pretty awesome, I think. Didn't really look at these very much. Uh, I'm sure there's some interesting uh, tidbits of information in there, but I didn't see anything too interesting. This one was really good. I mean, look at it. Glass, ice. So I'm just uh, experimenting in here just to uh, play around with the transmittance to try and figure out how that works. But I think the F0 and F90 um, F0 and F90. Yeah, you think the F0 and the F90 are some of the most important parameters there to mess around with. I also just wanted to see what this would look like um, with some time added into the panner, you know, to watch it, watch the texture moving, well, watch the UV textures moving along. So I multiplied it by a. Uh, increased value to increase the speed. I mean, look at that. It's like a little rippling water surface with uh, just a quick single node change. Some very nice iridescence um, reflecting off the surface there. All these materials are really interesting. You can see, you can see, just like in the older system, you can still see a lot of the jitter in materials that are halfway between metallic, fully, fully metallic, and um, completely um, diffused. So that halfway point in the previous system jittered quite a bit with lumen, um, and the, that same problem seems to be here as well. Um, this light function was pretty cool too, I thought. Quite interesting. It's got a rotator here, and you can uh, adjust the time value, uh, change the speed to increase the speed or decrease the speed. Just thought it was quite a neat, neat little example. Uh, 
uh, post process. You can see the sort of chromatic effect happening if you look down the hallway. That's pretty cool. So if you have a look at the eye here, you can see it flickering. Uh, so there's some kind of a bug happening here uh, on my RTX 4090. I've got the latest studio drivers as of about a month ago, so I, I bet there's a newer one I could probably download. Maybe maybe it's a driver issue. But I mean, it, you know, it looks pretty good. The hair looks fantastic. The volume looks really interesting. Also, there's that nano nano VDB. Um, uh, the the lights are starting to be able to be used. Point lights are starting to be able to use in the nano VDB plugin that that uh, developers working on. If you ever look on Twitter for Unreal Engine Nano VDB, you'll see some cool stuff. They look like really nice materials. Yeah, yeah, so you, where you can see where it's very metallic, uh, you know, a high metallic setting, it, it's very clean. I mean, uh, you know, it just looks excellent. So things that are extremely metallic or extremely diffuse seem to be the ones that have the least amount of noise. And the ones that are 50% uh, diffused, uh, so not, not diffused, um, roughness, I keep saying diffuse. The ones that are fifty percent roughness uh, tend to be, have a lot more noise in the um, in the textures. So fully meta metallic ones look fantastic, but uh, once you start dropping that metallic value and getting more um, uh, roughness in there, it starts to artifact a bit and two-sided lighting doesn't seem to work either. <laughs> or there's something going on there. Also here where the second weight is, I don't know if that's, it doesn't look like that's meant to be there, it appears to be a bug to me. I'm not sure what's going on there. I haven't looked at these nodes either, so I'm just, uh, just showing what it looks like. Clear coat, again, looks really interesting. You know, the small details look really nice. Dead air! Ah, the fuzzy shading has a very nice, you know, the Fresnel effect on it's pretty good. It's it's a bit, uh, a bit too clean. Um, yeah, I could do with a bit more displacement happening around the edges uh, for something that's like a fuzzy material like that, but it looks pretty cool. And you can see that Fresnel effect is possible in a very uh, pleasing way. This rough refraction looked pretty good as well, although it was a, uh, I don't know, it was, there was definitely some visual artifacting happening here. You can see I select the plane and then uh, change the UVs to, to zero to get rid of that odd kind of blend that was happening. And now it looks a lot better. I think, anyway. I think the whole point of the material there was to, as it was, was to demonstrate uh, that that kind of effect. It gets blocked up in my mouth. I don't say it no good. Yeah, these ones are my favorite. <laughs> As yeah, I mean, look at that carbon fiber-like material. It looks awesome. This thing looks incredible. Look at the dirt under the, uh, the thin film layer with an animated texture over it as well, and what looks like dirt maps. This thing as well. Like some sort of ice structure or rock under a glass, locked in amber kind of thing. And uh, anyone who's been paying attention to Unreal will know what this one is. <laughs> uh, I chuck it on a uh, car model at the end of the video. Ah, yeah, optimization. So it, it it seems that the slabs, the amount of slabs that you can use appears to be four before you start getting red in the shader warning errors in the debug menus. So, mm, I mean, that's not very many layers 
to, to only have four layers, but um, you know, before you start getting into the red. So I'm not sure how performant this is going to be. In the, in the, hopefully, the, you know, there'll be improvements in the future. Um, so in the uh, in the views, you can go in and select the various different uh, substrate uh, debug tools. So this one lets you pick a pixel with your mouse, and it tells you how many slabs there are. So this one over here has got two slabs, um, and it gives you information about each one. This one's got three <coughs> three slabs layered on top of each other. So you can see here in the substrate vertical layer, uh, there's one, and there's another one on the left there, no that's not it, and there's the, the third one. So you can quickly kind of kind of get an idea about what's happening in the material with that uh, view. I'm not even going to have a look at the rest of this. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a that's for a later day. That's tomorrow, Derek's problem. You can see the noise in this one. Probably, you might be able to see the noise in this one. This is what I was talking about earlier with the um, halfway point for roughness and metallic materials. If you go fully shiny, it looks great. Or fully uh, rough, it looks great too. Um, so here, if you have a look at the uh, material, uh, the material count, this is. Uh, you know, the, in the red, there's four uh, slabs and uh, three, and then two and one, because the other one has got two materials on it. Well, they all have more multiple materials. And then the substrate info just gives general information about the scene statistics. You could also do a command command stat space GPU. Uh, this is the roughness. Um, view rough refraction give you an idea of the expensive materials in the scene so yeah that's it and uh, here we have a car that I just uh, dragged into the scene and just threw some materials on I had to make a few very small modifications wasn't a fan of the trans translucent uh, windows um, materials. I think they need a bit more work to work for windows, but I just made, added one that's uh, fully fully um, metallic. But yeah, that opal shade is fantastic. Very impressive. Pretty cool. And that's it. Looking forward to using this in the future. Cheers.